Welcome to episode 35 of Tools in the Hall. If you're new to the Tools in the Hall segments, welcome. I appreciate you watching. We're going to show you lots of good stuff today that you haven't seen before if this is your first one. But if you're a veteran of watching these segments, there's still some new things that might keep your interest. And I would like to lead off with a teaser. We received some stuff. Ugh. From our pals at Snap-on. Why did we receive Snap-on tools? That is something for you to watch in the future. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do. The video that I'm going to release on what was in that box is something you are not going to want to miss. I promise. If you're a fan of vintage Snap-on tools, this is the video for you. So subscribe and watch for future videos that I have coming up because I always usually announce what's coming up at the end of my previous videos. So I'm gonna leave you with that teaser and I do thank you for subscribing because most people who watch the channel actually surprisingly haven't subscribed. Um, so if you would kindly just click the subscribe button now, that'd be great, it helps the channel grow and I really would appreciate it. It's free to you and it helps me out quite a bit, so thank you. All right, for the stuff that we got on the regular tool haul, first in, does Nipex, Nipex uh, has a set of two pliers wrenches and take a look at those and you'll see that these are the parallel smooth jaw pliers. There's a little cam mechanism in there that gives you lots of extra leverage and when you open the handles, these jaws don't spread like conventional pliers do, they spread in a parallel fashion. And because they're smooth jaw, you can use them on decorative bolts or bolts that you don't want to get marred up and using these gives you extra leverage that normal pliers don't give you because of that cam mechanism. They're a little expensive, yeah, but they're Nipex, which means they're top quality, truly pro-grade all the way. And part of this was a special order for a particular customer who wanted just a larger seven inch set that has a two pack that has a five inch. I'm gonna break the pack up, sell him the seven and put the five inch on the truck in regular inventory because it, it seems like no matter what the size is, they're popular and people buy them. And yeah, you'll pay through the nose for them, but this is one of those tools that when you look to, when you look to see why they're so much more expensive and you look at the build quality and the longevity and the fact that not just the pliers wrenches, but I'll also show you some Cobra pliers later that Nimbex makes, these things are, are intended to be used heavy every day and the build quality reflects that. They put lifetime warranties on it, so they stand behind it. Any problems with them, I just give you new ones. So the money is money well spent when you look to buy a pro-grade tool. Nipex is one of the brands that is synonymous with top of the line stuff. Next we have this 12 piece standard set of gear wrench hex bit sockets. These are the quarter and three-eighths drive sets. The smaller sizes have quarter drive. The larger sizes have the three-eighths drive. You're not going to find... I'm sorry, this is not the quarter drive set. This is just three-eighths drive. Some of their sets have the quarter drive in the smaller sizes, and they move up to three-eighths and even half-inch on the really big sizes. It's not typical to find some of the, the really small sizes in three-eighths drive, but this set has them because... Normally, you're not going to need the leverage that you would get using a 3 8 drive ratchet on the smaller size socket. So typically, you see the smaller sizes in quarter inch, and then they move up a little bit. But, you know, they put lifetime warranties on them. They're, they're gear wrench, and uh, they're fabulous at standing behind the products. Like like Nipex, they're, they're, they're top-of-the-line stuff, top-tier uh, pro-grade tools that they keep cranking out different versions of, of their tools, and I really like GearWrench because they're bringing new stuff to market regularly, and it's nice to see. They remind me a lot of Milwaukee in that Milwaukee also puts a lot of time into developing new products and bringing them to market. GearWrench is the same way. GearWrench is really more hand tools than anything, and of course Milwaukee is mostly power tools, but they've gotten into hand tools a lot lately, and I think in some of my previous tool haul videos, I'll put a link up there to look at some of the hand tools that Milwaukee's been coming out with because I've been putting some of those on the truck. We have 
the mini hook and pick set from Mayhew. I love Mayhew a lot because most of their stuff is made in the U.S. These are made in Taiwan, but they do manufacture their screwdrivers and their pry bars, punches and chisels all in the U.S. They even have those, those uh, spring-loaded punches that you manually draw back and release. Again, I put those in one of my previous videos. You can check up there to uh, click up there to check it out. And I'm a big fan of the product quality that they put out and also how easy they are to do business with. Their warranties are second to none. They stand behind everything and it's they're, they're a terrific company. The prices are actually really very good too. So it's not like you're paying through the nose to get that made in USA label on the on the product. You're paying reasonable prices. Now granted, there's still tool truck prices when you buy off my tool truck, but you can get Mayhew lots of places and not spend that kind of money on it. This is Milwaukee's new long reach quarter drive M12 ratchet. And the reason why I like these is because they put a smaller head on them. It used to be that their long reach ratchets had this big clunky head on them Nobody really liked them. They were not big sellers, for me anyway, because of that reason. Mercifully, Milwaukee understood this and put a smaller head on their quarter drive long reach ratchets. Now, there's a genuine competition for the snap-on long reach ratchet, which everyone always liked because those had the better configuration. Now, you take the small head size on a long reach ratchet, combine that with Milwaukee's five-year tool warranty and two or three-year battery warranty, and you've got yourself a winner. And no surprise, since I've gotten these in stock and put them on the truck, they've been selling like crazy. I want to, I, I want to show this to a, um, a fairly young technician on, on uh, coming up this week because he was really interested in seeing them. And he's a great kid because he's... Still new, he's learning, he's going to school, but he's been a tech for a while. So he's not wet behind the ears kind of green. He is, he's got some experience and some knowledge. So he's building his tool collection and he's in a spot in his career where he's making enough money where he can afford and appreciate nicer tools and he's willing to pace himself and bring in smaller, uh, and bring in rather uh, tools slowly into his collection instead of just going all in and getting big into debt. He's smart and I like that about him a lot. And he's been buying some stuff regularly from me for the last few months. So I'm dying to show him that to see what he thinks and then uh, and then keep them coming in as a, as a regular on truck item. The nice thing about most of Milwaukee stuff is I don't really see many back orders from them. Most everything I've ever had to get is readily available, including these ratchets. Speaking of ratchets, here's the non-electric kind. This is the four piece set from gear wrench this is the 90 tooth gear in these and it comes with the half inch drive long handle the 3 8 drive long handle and the 3 8 drive stubby and also the quarter drive these are the non-locking flex head ratchets that all carry a lifetime warranty the 92 seems to be pretty popular they have phased out their older 84 tooth designs in favor of the 90s and of course the 120 xps are still on the market and selling very well. And I think that they're the smoothest feeling ratchet on the market. They feel to me comparable to Snap-on's ratchets, which are beautiful and they have a great feel to them and they have a nice resistance to them when you, when you use them. So they have a solid feel. The 120 XPs in the nineties, I think feel very similar to me, but I don't use them every day. Like you would certainly your opinion would matter more, but if you're looking to save yourself a ton of money, consider the gear wrench ones, to get, comp to get comparable quality to any of the other big names in the industry. Here's a bag full of some small items like back probes and some rebuild kits for sure shot non aerosol sprayers and some gear wrench ratchet rebuild kits. I keep a full inventory of those on the truck so I can swap out broken under warranty for people and also a few individual um, filler caps for those sure shot uh, non aerosol sprayers why they don't put this cap in a rebuild kit is beyond me why they don't just put this on the on the sprayer and sell it that way is beyond me the normal 
cap that it comes with is this cap right here, right? It's just, it's got a big hex nut on it, threaded fitting that goes in, and there's your Schrader valve to fill it. And then you can buy this upgrade if you want, which has these ears on it, so you don't need a wrench. Sure shot, just put this on the can. Why would you, I don't understand why we do this. Not my marketing decision, but what do I know? And you know, you are probably thinking, well, it's, it's a missed opportunity to sell more products. Five, charge more, people will still buy it. I don't know. Looks like you got some repairs that came back uh, from warranty from our pals at Milwaukee. That's just an M12 three amp hour battery. We've got some repair. We've got some, re sorry, I'm not talking into the mic. We have some repair items that came back from our friends at Power Tool Repair. And you might be asking yourself, hey, Lindsay, why aren't you making air tool repair videos out of these? Because I don't like working on these. You've seen me fail at these before in a previous air tool repair video. I'll send the link up there so you can check that out. Um, they're not easy for me to work on. There's some mysteries in here that I haven't quite figured out. And it was in the interest of time, we just sent it off to Power Tool Repair. They took care of it. Same with air hammers. They're, these are just a mystery to me. They're not that complicated, but I don't know how to troubleshoot them. There's, there's a, a, a housing in here, and, a, and I forget all the, the names of the parts, but there's this, there's this plunger that moves in and out, which caused the hammering action on here. And uh, I've, I've taken them apart, and they're not easy to get apart because there's this, this barrel is threaded where it fits into here, and it's, it's a bear to get that thing off. And once you take it off, it's like you're not really looking at anything. There's just these, these sealed assemblies that you really can't figure out. So I don't, instead of me just throwing parts at something, I'd rather have somebody give it a definitive diagnostic and take care of it that way. So air hammers, I don't do myself. Uh, I will do a lot of the impacts and stuff, uh, but not these guys and not those older. It was a Mako, but it's an Ingersoll 231 series impact. I'll send those out. And this one was kind of mysterious too. I took a look at this originally and the problems that I thought it had weren't the, the cause of the problem. This is uh, an angle die grinder from Ingersoll Rand. And the problem with this was there was low power getting to the collet there. And I thought maybe there was a problem with an O-ring on it, but it wasn't because it just kept blowing air back out of the, the rear vent. So again, my limited diagnostic skill on this ran its course pretty quick. And we wound up sending this one to power tool repair as well. If you guys need any power tool repairs, and I've, I do get this inquiry regularly. If you need power tool repairs done, look up a company called Power Tool Repair. They're in Ohio and they work on just about everything. The only thing they don't work on is some of the newer Snap-on stuff. You have to send that stuff to Snap-on directly, but Power Tool Repair or PTR works on just about every brand. They're an authorized service center for every major brand so you can get warranty stuff done. I highly recommend them. They're who we send the stuff to that we don't work on ourselves. SunX has these driveline sockets. These are the half inch drive 12 millimeter 12 point socket with a flex head on them. And these are really, really necessary for, for, for driveline work. Unfortunately, they break a lot. They have that pivot pin in there that the head pivots around on, that breaks. Uh, but luckily, Sonex has a, a lifetime warranty on their stuff. Very easy to get this covered. I always keep extras on the truck because I service so many large shops that work on uh, heavy trucks that they need these all the time. So every, every few weeks or a month, I'm swapping these out. Here's a blast from the past. Yeah, can we have a moment of silence for monster tools? 
Uh, we had a good run, didn't we? Yeah, we did. They had they had a line of air tools uh, a while back that were really pretty solid. And I had a customer produce this out of his toolbox and ask if we can get it fixed. And sure enough, our friends at Power Tool Repair have an inventory of parts for this gun. So we sent it to them and they fixed it right up. That's the other reason I love PTR so much is they've got a great parts inventory. If you need to buy parts from them, you can. They have schematics of every single tool. So you just go to their website. They have a really nice search feature on their homepage. Punch in the criteria, choose your brand, choose a model, and it takes you to a selection or the page of that particular tool. And then all you have to do is look at the schematics right there with the parts breakdown and pricing and everything. It's super easy. And I imagine it, it took a lot of work to get their their website to the point where you could where you had that level of functionality it's not easy to keep inventory it's not easy to uh, upload and digitize schematics and parts lists and everything else like that but they have a fabulous fabulous website it will answer all your questions when it comes to needing parts and they tell you right there stuff is in stock or out of stock what the availability is and I think that they've been great. They ship quick, and we've never had problems with them. I love them a lot, so I'm going to keep giving them shout-outs. SG Tool is the maker of a lot of specialty tools. They have uh, specialty pliers and hose cutters. Uh, we get their weather pack crimpers all the time. They also have these wire strippers, and these are kind of cool because you have... Uh, a cutter blade right under here. You just cut your wire by squeezing the handle. And then when you strip it, you can set this little gauge here for the depths of the strip that you need. Or there's also a gauge on the side which tells you how far in the uh, the stop will go for your wire. And then you feed it in there, pull the trigger, and it strips it. Super easy. And I feel kind of bad because I used to have these on the truck all the time and then they kind of fell off the radar and I wasn't reordering them for some reason and I don't know why. Things happen in this business where it's difficult to track your inventory sometimes. So let's say there's three brands of this and I have my system set to reorder them automatically once I get to a certain threshold, right? And let's say they're on back order. Well, the order will go in, but the back order doesn't get fulfilled. And after a certain amount of time goes by, my order drops off the radar from my supplier. So it's not like if this goes on back order today, a year from now, I'm going to get this when it comes off of back order. No, this goes in back order today and three months from now, it may be gone out of their system. So I have to remember to reorder this stuff. And I don't always do that. I think this fell victim to that because I like these tools a lot. They're good sellers. And it was a long time since I had them on the truck. And I only realized it a few weeks ago when somebody asked me for one. I'm like, I forgot that I needed to get them. And now they're, they're back on, on the regular order. So they're a regular item on the truck. Easy Red's neck lights are very popular. They've got this one in red. They also have them in green and in orange. They make this same light for lots of different brands. You have seen this light under the Mako, Cornwell, Caterpillar brand, and they make a version of this light for Snap-on. It all comes from our pals at Easy Red. The nice thing about this particular light is there's dual light heads here and they charge and operate independently. You can wrap it around your neck or your head and there's no battery pack in the back like an older design that Snap-on used to have has. And as a result, uh, it's more comfortable to lay on your creeper and, and you're not worried about um, rubbing the back of your head up against a, a battery block or a charging block those on the back of these things. So this is a far superior design to the other ones that I have seen that aren't like this. Love these, there's a good seller for us. And uh, I don't think I've ever had a problem with them. The, the problem I did have with one of these, and you can check out, man, I'm referring to a lot of previous videos. Check out one that I did a, about, a, um, uh, about made in US tools to snap on. And I use this um, light as an example of third-party branded overseas manufacturing. Something that Snap-on, well, every company uses it, but Snap-on I use as an example in particular to dispel some myths, but the long and short of it is EasyRed manufactures these for Snap-on, and they 
they they and a lot of other companies do the same thing. It's very prevalent in any industry. It's not just a tool industry, but it's any industry. And I'm sure if you have any experience with other industries, and in particularly in manufacturing, you'll know firsthand how third-party branding works and how other companies make stuff under different brands all the time. Just like I promised, here's some Cobra pliers from Nipex. These you can see are a little dissimilar from the pliers wrenches I showed you because when you when you open and close the jaws on these, they pivot here and they're a smaller distance here than at the tip, but these have a much different shaped jaw. These are meant for grabbing things that the pliers wrenches are not meant to grab. These will mar a surface of something that you're grabbing, but these are very versatile because you can hold round pipe with these as well as nuts and bolt heads, square hex, uh, 12 point, even rounded stuff. These hold very well. And they're very popular in both the automotive and plumbing and electrical and a lot of other industries too. This three piece set is 173 on the truck, which is kind of pricey obviously because it's a tool truck, but I think that there are very few brands that have the value for the money that Nipex has. Like the pliers wrenches, you will be paying more for these than you will regular re regular pliers. But if there's anyone who relies on Nipex every day, tell me that there isn't a better brand. Titan has one of the best deals going on welding helmets. This is kind of a cool design. It's got flaming skulls on it which is kind of cool. But the features on these are rather nice. They have four sensors on them, which means they're going to be more responsive. They have less of a chance of getting flashed. And the response time is one thirty thousandths of a second to darken down. Has external knobs, so when you got your gloves on, you don't have to worry about taking your helmet off and changing things or putting it back on. You can go to grinding mode and change the, 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 uh, the settings externally with your gloves on. And they're not that expensive compared to other top quality welding helmets. These are less than $200. I think these are around 170 something right now. And for the money, they're kind of tough to beat. I, I love the quality of them. I've sold a lot of the Titan brand ones. It's their shop iron line. Never, ever had a complaint or a problem with them at all. And, and I'm happy to, to sell them because... You know, I have access to Aesop and Miller and Jackson and Safe Face... Uh, a few other brands in there, I think. But I think this is the best value. You don't have to spend that kind of money to get the top quality helmet. You still get a very good helmet, full features, and uh, the the headgear's half decent. You know, I'm not going to go tell you it's the best in the world, but, you know, Jackson has good headgear, and Aesop has very good headgear, especially on their, their top of the line, Sentinel line of helmets. But you're spending a ton of money, and the Miller ones are very good too, but again, extremely expensive. If you don't have a Power Probe 3, you should. And you've heard me brag about these in the past. And I'll keep doing it because they're such a fantastic tool. The display reads voltage. So you can, you can check voltage and continuity and ground. And you can use this button to inject power through that probe. So this will inject 12 volts of power <clears throat> in order for you to test the functionality of a particular component. So... Let's say you have a door actuator that's not working or a window motor that's not working. You can hook one end up to your battery, get your 12 volts of power, hook the probe up to the contact, push the trigger, and when it uh, sends out 12 volts, you'll see if your system works or not. If it does, work your way back down the line and, and check out into the preceding connections and, and see where your fault lies. You can use these to test fuses and relays, all kinds of cool stuff. Very versatile tool. It might be intimidating to you if you're not a guy who really enjoys working on electrical stuff this will make it easier it will make it hopefully more enjoyable and once you get over your fear or or uh, intimidation perhaps would be a better word of working on electrical components i think you'll find something like this extremely useful they have other versions of this this is a power probe 3 they have a 3ez which has some updated display features and they have a power probe 4 which does more than this thing does, but 
Most people don't need that functionality in the four. You get the three, you've got your bases covered, and it makes a great tool when you, to go to for troubleshooting electrical connections. That's it for this tool haul. I hope you enjoyed it. We have some things that you haven't seen before on all the tool hauls. And again, if this is your first one, thank you for watching and hanging in there. And uh, please do keep watching because I've got to show you all that snap-on stuff I was telling you about. And it may be more impressive than what you think. So I'll leave you with that teaser there. We'll also have more tool haul videos because it's a, one of the more popular segments that we have. And every time we get some carts and toolboxes in, we do full reviews on those. So do me a favor and click down here now to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, use a tool. Don't be one.